What's going on, y'all? So last night I had on Shay from the No Spoon Podcast. We was talking about his book, The Freedom Doctrine, Book One, My Path to Canaan. And unfortunately, the live stream um stopped working. I think something with the internet happened and we had to like redo the live. So since I don't like putting out stuff like that, like two different videos that go to one, I'm gonna just combine both the videos and instead of the live replay, it's gonna be a full video. So hope you guys enjoy the interview. Um, there's a lot of different topics we talked about. You know what I'm saying? Um, we talked about um, Brick Girl. We talked about top five favorite rappers. We talked about, um, of course, his book. We talked about a lot of things. Like when me and Shay started talking, we just get a different range of topics. And not to mention, shout out to Kofa from the Growth Talk podcast. He actually called in from an undisclosed location. And we had a great conversation, man. So I hope you guys enjoyed this interview. And for those who watched the live stream last night, I apologize. You know what I'm saying? I was no fault to me. Just my internet just went went out for a second and came back on. I just want to give you guys the proper product. So without further ado, man, here's my interview with Shay from the No Spoon Podcast. Yo, what's good? What's good, everybody? Live stream, man. It's been a minute since we've been here. Hey, we're going to hold you like the kids say. ain't going to hold you. You see my hat. I have a special guest tonight. Shay from the No Spoon Podcast. You know what I'm saying? He rep L.A. I also kind of sort of rep L.A., not Los Angeles. Um, I, I grew up on Leonard Avenue. You know what I mean? I grew up on Leonard Avenue, so we call that L.A. First and foremost, man, let's get to the um, shout out for the super chat. So, oh, no, hold up. There we go. It's been a minute. It's been a minute since I, <laughs> since I had a... Uh, I did a live stream. I did a live stream. All right, hold on, hold on. Here we go. So um, my brother hit me with a $2 super chat, said, bring back Real Rap Ron. I was considering bringing back Real Rap Ron. Um, <clears throat> for Real Rap Ron to come back, there is um, a requirement. It's called McAllen, and I'm not drinking tonight. So I don't know. We, we might not bring back Real Rap Ron tonight. But let's see what we got going on here, man. Almanize in the building. Hey, y'all. Congratulations. Uh, JC, the storyteller, say congratulations. Um, let's get it. Mike, what's going on, Mike? That's probably one of my favorite, like, people who comment on my, my posts is Mike, man. I appreciate you, Mike. Okay, real rap, Ron? I don't know. We might have to bring it back. We might have to bring it back, man. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Celebrate nine months of a membership. If you guys want to become channel members, please, please become a channel member. It helps the channel grow. Um, we got... Grown Folk Talk, 5K subs with the light skin bicep. I appreciate that. I left the beating man to come here. I love you, man. I appreciate that. What else we got here, man? Um, you guys are just talking in here. Hit the like button. You know how the algorithm works. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Mama Lex right here. Are you having your house guests? Uh, guests say congratulations tonight. If you want to come, you could definitely come and say congratulations. I don't mind. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that would mean the world to me. That would mean the world to me. But if you're going to come do it, let's do it before Shay gets here. You know what I'm saying? Let's do it before Shay gets here because I don't want to be rude to our guests. You feel me? I don't want to be rude at all. Got my boy Jamela here. Jamel, delusional reality with the five emojis. From the heart. Okay, so Mona Gold become a member. Martha, okay, oh, 12 months? What? Wow. Damn, Mo. I, 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 that's, that's, that's big right there. That means a lot to me. That means uh, 12 months. I even know I had the membership. Of for 12 months. So I don't know. I don't know if um YouTube is capping or but you know, I appreciate that. Definitely appreciate that. Um so we got Shay here tonight, right? Shay from the No Spoon Podcast. He wrote a book. Wrote a book called The Freedom Doctrine, Book One, My Path to Canaan. I wanna have him come on here. We have a conversation about the book. Then you know, see what the see what the, the the conversation flows to, right? See what the conversation flows to, because y'all may or may not know me and Shay always got jokes, but you know what I mean. I think we're gonna be trying try to be more serious tonight, right? Trying to be a little more serious tonight, even though he had jokes on my LA hat. What's good with you, Shay? Oh wait, wait, wait! I got you muted. There you go. What's good with you, man? What's up, bro? How How's, you been, man? It's a long time, man. Yeah, 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 man. It's good. It's it's it, we been. It's been it's been too long. I seen that hat age well. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? We all can't go to. Well, you ain't go. We go to lids. You look like you go to lids and get your hats. You look like a lids type of dude. Or you probably go to the the Slauson swap meet or something like that. 
Ah, there we go. Uh, uh, pro image. That should sound bootleg, bro. Pro image. No, pro image is, is official. Pro image. They got all the latest drops. Like you get some exclusive. Uh, they got people lined up out there. Pro image to get some. Exclu- I missed the last one. They had a good one like a couple weeks ago, and I missed it. So they got people lined up to buy hats. Yeah, because they got exclusives. They got exclusives like you not getting. It's almost like Jordans. I'm just saying. I'm so not. Wait, I, wait, I don't wait, get wait, paid. Wait. I don't get paid by Pro Image, but I mean, if they want to, Pro Image Fox Hills, hit me up. <laughs> so like, let me get this straight. Cause I know, I know you. You're 40 years old. You lining up to go buy hats at 40 years old. Shay. You're not telling me that. I didn't say I was lining up. I said people line up. I'll just. Now there was one hat in particular I, that one that I missed. I I probably would have lined up if I had, if I had the time. I don't have time on on Saturdays like that. So gotcha. you know, if I had the time, I might have lined up to get it. I I inquired about it afterwards. I'm not gonna lie. Like, is it still any more remaining? It wasn't. So no more now, remaining, would you would you pay good. more money than retail for a hat? I'm not gonna lie. No. <laughs> 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 I ain't that serious. To me. I just, I mean, they just have different kinds. So it's like, like the the exclusive stuff that they drop. To be honest with you, like they'll come out again. Like it, it's there's a lot of stuff that are cool. Like so, I don't really like trip off it. Off, I'm not like that type. But I mean, I'm just saying, at Pro Image, they do stuff like that. You know what I mean? And if Pro wow, Image man. wants to go ahead and like bless me with some of these latest drops so that I can promote it, you know what I mean? Again, hit me up, Pro Image Fox Hills. Get at me. Right. <laughs> uh, Eric Jordan for the super chat. Uh, I appreciate you for the $5 super chat, Eric, man. Um, let's get into the book, man. Let's get into the book. First yeah, and foremost, it. man, I love the book. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie. It was some things I wasn't, I was um, critical about. First things first, I didn't get no shout outs. I didn't get no <laughs> quotes. <laughs> you feel me? Like, quotes. you, you could have quoted, you could have went through, through my whole catalog of videos and quoted something I said instead of quoting Nipsey Hussle, but I guess that's the Los Angeles thing, you feel me? But, man, what, what made you want to write this book? Um, Well, to be honest with you, like, it's there's more to it. Like, I said, it's book one, mm-hmm. and that's be- so I really wanted to do it, do it all in one book, but I was getting kind of like, nah, let's just release it, like, in different volumes. I get the money! Yeah. I My get bad. the money! That's for my super chat. Shout out to Eric Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> I love coming on here. I swear I do. <laughs> it's been too long, bro. Seriously, it's been too long, man. <laughs> I got some other... yeah, I've been do- hey, look, it's crazy because I've been doing some other podcasts like recently, like, you know, being guests and trying to promote the book and stuff like that. Yeah. And it, it's a it's it's a different vibe, bro. It's a different vibe. It's I this is this, this the vibe I like. I'm not going to lie. Like, <laughs> this is it right here. You know, when you get me interrupted. <laughs> nah, but uh, yeah, it was just, it was it was really like because, you know, like, you know, and I've talked about it before on this show and other, and even my stuff, like, you know, I, I do programs with men that have been through addiction and incarceration and all that type of stuff. And um, I really just don't like the programs that they run. And mm-hmm. I, I just think that the programs that they run is not really conducive to what they're trying to accomplish or what they say they're trying to accomplish. So instead of uh, just sitting back and complaining about it, I just decided to write my own. So this first book is was really just to kind of like kind of set the foundation of where where I'm going with the whole series and to tell you a little bit about my story. So, you know, my credentials and what what may, gives me the right to speak on these issues. So. That was really what this book is all about. Um, the the books that are going to be following is going to get more into the to the uh, I guess you would say cur- not not really curriculum because they're just going to be books. But you know, eventually the goal is to make it into a curriculum and to run my own programs, uh, mm. helping people with the same issues that I've been through. You know, excuse me. And I want to um, piggyback off of that. What you say about the credentials because that's part of your book. What was it? Mm-hmm. I don't know. One of these chapters, the disclaimer. So, like the credentials well, that it's called credentials. That that chapter. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I'm going through the book now. First of all, I wish it was a physical <laughs> copy. Let's not get on that. I got my this old ass iPad. I know you're I right. Got. Hey. I had a, 
You know what I mean? No, you're right because I am going to be coming. The, uh, uh, let me just let me say there will be a paperback version that's going to be coming out. Uh, I'm hopefully to get it. I'm going to start the process this week, and it'll be it should be done in the next couple of weeks, so we could get a, a physical copy out there for people that are interested in it. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't go spend seven ninety nine because that's all it is for the ebook, and you'll get it right there in your hand and start buying and and be able to start reading it today. So I'm just going to plug that in real quick. JC right here, another um, author, you know what I'm saying? Got his book right here behind me, the contract. And he said, congrats on the book because... I mean, oh, man, like, I, I mean, appreciate that. I'm in like in the infancy stages of writing a book. Like, I didn't even put no pen to paper yet, but JC been throwing like a lot of things at me and challenges to get me to start writing. So, yeah, so don't worry. I'll, I'll be, I'm catching up, bro. I'm catching up. So, yeah, the credentials. Yeah. I like the part, I like the fact that you put the credentials in there because the way that America academia is now and how... They basically prop up weirdos as you oh, oh, goofies. You know what I'm saying? Let me talk. Let me talk. LA talk. They prop up goofies to, to try to narrate these these conversations. And I think that you know what I'm saying. I don't know. Just I'm trying to put the words together, but you could do it better because you brought the, talked about the credentials. But the, yeah, like the, the goofies is should not be the ones telling the story or giving the advice because they coming from a place of I don't know, like. Empower, not not empowerment, but like, yeah, I'm trying to think of the word, bro. I'm kind of stuck. You're the wordsmith. No, I I know exactly what you're trying to say, and that's exactly what I what I what I'm saying with this whole thing is so so. There's two different ways. There's different ways of looking at this. Like from the, from the area that I'm talking about, as far as people who have been in, you know, in, in these type of situations that I speak on and in my life story, right? Like. These people ain't experts because these people didn't really live that. And I'm not saying that right. you have to, in order to understand, you have to have lived it. But who can better understand? And I and, and this is just my what I see, um, you know, when I when I'm in prison and I'm sitting down and I'm talking to a, a psychiatrist or somebody that, you know, some prison activist that's trying to help me with something. I know what you want to hear and I know what to say to get what I want. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like I'm watching, I'm watching the show Lock Lock Up or Lockdown, whatever the one of them shows it, it was on. I was watching it last night, and the dude is sitting there talking to the camera, and it's like I'm not buying anything he's saying because I know you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm saying like I know you because like, I seen your type before. So it's mm-hmm. almost like if I'm sitting there talking to him, I'm gonna be like, bro, let's let's just get to let's get let's cut to it, right? Let's cut to it. Let's talk about what we need to talk about. All that like you know all this you know sad stuff and all this stuff you talking about like let's be real and let's really talk about how we gonna get to the next level and so you know i really feel like people know how to manipulate these experts for one two we rely on these experts too much that it gives them power there was an example of that um last week when uh joy reed had a girl from mom's liberty on right and so there was a part in there that kind of stuck out to me and and she was saying the the woman was asking her at what what place in uh or what in what context should should sex toys be discussed in a children's classroom, right? Yeah. And Joy, what Joy's argument was, Joy never said it shouldn't be done. What she was saying is that why don't we refer to the experts to tell us what should be in the classroom or not? And I'm thinking to myself, like, there's no way in the world, I don't care how many degrees you have, right? Like mm-hmm. if you came and asked me, should we talk about strap on dildos to children in class? The answer is no and never. I don't care what it's about. Fact, I don't. Yeah. But I don't. But but what happens is, is that we have experts who come in and they say, well, you know, this study in 19 not, woo, woo, just said this and we should do this. No, bro, I'm not trying to hear it. My common sense can tell me that that's wrong. And I think yeah. that that's the problem that's going on in America. We 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 rely too heavily on these people, man. And they they. They know that. That's why they take advantage of it. Yeah, that's a fact. That's definitely a fact. And that, that's why I say I like the credentials. Shout out to my brother. Say entitlement. The entitlement of these people saying that they their their expertise or you know like you say Joy Reed said with the experts what they say and these experts are basically propped up. They they um they built up in college. They get them at a vulnerable age where they finally leave their parents and now they into a college space and now they think this is adulthood and they started to form and, and build and kind of like a snowball like you build a snowball up now you're ready to throw the snowball in the fight pretty sure you don't know about snowballs being from la but you know so that's how you build a <laughs> snowball up 
I have no idea. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> that? You talking about Santa Claus, North Pole? <laughs> Let me get back to my iPad, man. I had some some things I, I was highlighting, and I got to go back. You know what I'm saying? This thing is all hot because it's so old. Like I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep getting on you about me not having a physical copy of this book. But... Um, we, the physical copy is coming, ladies and gentlemen. The physical copy is coming. <laughs> I might even, you know, I might even, I might have to throw you in there, in the physical copy. You might have to. I want my picture on the back. I'm just gonna put your, I'm gonna put your picture on the back with that hat on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like Pro Image Fox Hills. This is why I'm asking for a sponsorship deal here. We got brothers like this walking around with this, you know, the Sandlot hat on. <laughs> The family. Let's talk about the family, right? <laughs> <laughs> I knew this conversation was going to go this way. I knew it. I knew it was going to go this way because I know how Shay is and I know how it get when we start talking. So <laughs> let's talk about the family. Um, yeah, Let's do it. Yeah, we can talk about it. Let's do it. Yeah, let's go. All right. The family are survival units. Let's, let's um, build on that. Why did you say that for I mean, because that's really what it, what it, I mean, if you break it down, it's the most, it's the fundamental aspect of society, the building blocks of society. Like we, we, we form family, these units to help us better survive and to be able to carry on our, the next generation. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's really what it's about. Like we really, we really want, you want your children to be better than you and your children's yeah. children to be better than them and go on and so mm-hmm. on and so forth. And that's the whole, I mean, that's just the whole point of life. Like that's how we continue. If we look at like, our whole a whole theory of evolution is based on making our ge- our genetic makeup better than the next one, and we do that by instilling certain values and morals that can, that are conducive to to living a better life and right. making like the whole the whole reason humanity we we able to like have the technology and have the time that we have is because we've evolved to that point that we can create these things. Mm-hmm. So. A family is where that all begins. And what happens is now is we're trying to destroy that family because the state has become so powerful. And the state wants is competing with the power of the family. And so See, now, that's why. I get yeah, that go ahead. money. I get that money. Shout out to Gail I. Knight for the five dollar super chat. And I know Shay liked the Shay like um what's her name? Jocelyn. I think it's a, that that Latino, Latina, or Latinx connection that she got. Now I think you like her. You know who Jocelyn is? No, I don't even know. And Latinx. <laughs> who is jo- who is Jocelyn? Jocelyn is the Puerto Rican princess. She was married to uh, Stevie J. Ask your wife. I, I, I'm pretty sure your wife knows who Jocelyn is. She probably do. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I, I've heard her talk about. I probably heard her talk about it. I don't know. I, I was doing something. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, so they. Uh, so let's continue on. So. I, that clip that I use for my um my my super chat is when Jocelyn was high on cocaine in the studio allegedly, and she was like freestyling. She said, "I get that money, I get that money." So I like that that clip. So in your book, right, it says single individuals who are left with a void of belonging and need to be taught and led. That void will almost be filled by the state, like you were just basically were saying. Like the state is going to come in. The state is going to tell you what to do. The state is going to tell you how do you have to operate, what you can eat, how could you move. Your phone bill, like it, it tells you everything. It tells you everything. What you got to put into your body, where you could go. I think we have a you... natural urge to, to to find something and follow something. Well, you we know do. what I mean. And and, mm-hmm. and I think, I think on a bigger scale, on a spiritual scale, that that something is God. Um, but however you want to go ahead and, and and manifest that, that's on you. But I think that right. we have, I think human beings are 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 constantly in a fight within themselves. That, that mm-hmm. we have a higher nature and a lower nature. And we're always trying to overcome that lower nature. I think what's happening now is that we're, we're, we're so far down on constantly being on the lower nature that we're just doing anything and everything that feels good and neglecting that that's higher spiritual nature. So I think that we have that need for it. And when you see a lot of people that are really way below at the bottom and they're just feeding off their lower nature, they they still have never lost that innate desire to find that truth and find that that higher self. So what happens is they substitute it for these ideologies 
and these mm -hmm. these senses of authority that come in and they say we'll replace that. So, you know, religion can be used in that sense. Um, the, but the state ultimately they want the control because they have the material control and they want to control the resources and they want to control everything as impossible at the pot that they possibly can. Yeah. Next, the man. <laughs> men are the target. There's no easy way to put this. I'll put it. And it in order for the agenda to be successful, men have to be removed. So let's, let's, let's expound on that, right? I I, I told you I should yeah. send you a list of questions, but you're flowing, guy. You you're really quick with your feet. You're quick on the feet, man. I wrote the book, bro. So I got <laughs> <laughs> I know what it says. <laughs> Yo, I'm sorry, y'all. This 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 conversation is definitely going on like one of our phone calls. Like this, this is how Yeah, this is how the, yeah, this is how phone calls because <laughs> right, so. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, yeah, the man. So why, why do you feel like men are the target? Like, I mean, we all feel like that, but why do you feel like that? And why you put that in, into the book? So I don't believe that men are the target just because of they're men. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't believe in 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 this. Well, men because men are stronger or they're they grow a beard or I mean, anything or they're they're aggressive. I think that men are the target and they're the target for this. Like. So if you break down a human being, right, and human being, we're really comprised of two, two, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We're, 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 we're a combination of two things, emotions and logic, right? Mm -hmm. And, and men think more logically, women think more emotionally, right? Both are yeah. necessary. Both are, are important for life. Both give life meaning, both help humanity in 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 totality however logic and this is why when you talk when you talk like biblically when they say that 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 the the woman must submit to the man right right what this really speaking about is that logic like we have to submit to logic and each human being individually you can have an emotional side you can have that feminine side of thinking but that needs to submit to your logical side because it doesn't matter. Like you can feel and you can use your imagination to feel things and want things and desire certain things. But at the end of the day, logic has to come into play. So when right. human beings, let's let's just say like the right, let's take the right brothers, right? The people that invented airplanes. Mm -hmm. Now they had an idea that man would be able to fly, but logically man is not going to fly. If he decides to jump off a three story building, right? It's not yeah. going to happen. So, they had to use the logical side of their brain and combine that with the, with the with the emotional, the imaginative side of their brain, and say, "How can we logically make that happen?" And they logic and they use that part to build an airplane. Well, that logic is something that's so dangerous when you're trying to manipulate. If you've ever tried to manipulate somebody, if you've ever tried to play to uh, uh, to get over on somebody, the one thing that you use is you play to their emotions, right? right. And so. So men are a threat because they instill the logical part of thinking. And mm -hmm. so what they would rather do is keep a population that is that is always vibrating on the emotional side of their brains, because that's the that's the side that can be manipulated. And that's the side that can be used. It's subjective. It's not it's not based in concrete. It's not based in reality. It's based in how somebody feels within themselves. So right. this is why men become the target, because men pass that pass that. Uh, trait onto the next generation and what you see now is that when we remove man from the household the next generation becomes ge more emotional and more emotional is the gener generation after that and then because there's no man in the household to instill that logical way of thinking that rational way of thinking and bring order in and, and and boundaries and 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 um a discipline into the life then you have this chaotic anything goes and We'll do whatever feels good. And so and again, going back to what we talked about before, when you start having that type of thinking, then you still have that need to want something big higher and the state gonna right. come in and take control. And so I just I don't think it's anything of like, oh well, men are just better than women. 
I think that men just represent something that they want to get away from. If you were trying to manipulate somebody, let's just say this. And I think as men, we've all tried to do that, especially when it comes to women. We all want to try to talk women out of something or work them for some way. You, we will never give them. We will never appeal to common sense because at <laughs> one point we've all been that you know that dusty dude that didn't have no place to stay and was trying to talk her into giving me a place to stay. And if you really sat back and you appealed to her logic and be like, "Look, I don't bring none to the table, mm-hmm. right? I'm just I'm probably going I'm gonna be gone in the night in the morning. I'm probably never gonna call you again. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. you should let me come to your house. It wouldn't work." But what did you do? You played to emotional. <laughs> you played to the emotions. You told her how pretty she was. You told her yeah. how you, you know she, she you know she was better than any girl in the club. Like you was who you've been looking for. This and this and that. You did all that stuff. So just think about it in that sense. So they, if you can remove that, that's what you try to do when you trying to you know work some. You a married man now, uh, Laurent, so You don't know nothing yeah. about that no more. So I'm just nah, saying. Nah, those, those, those days is over, Hover. Like, yeah, I'm just a nice <laughs> married man. Come home. You know what I'm saying? Eat dinner. You know what I'm saying? We, we, sit at the, we sit at the bed, read together, like just read books and just, that's it. Yo, we just, simple life, man. Like, she pick clear, up my clothes clear and, and clear I drive fun. everywhere. Yep. That's it. <laughs> I remember you said when you went away for um, your birthday, how you said, um, you you know you and your wife had like matching sets like you had on like cheetah print shorts and shit, and I was like man I can't do that now I can see myself doing that because I'm married now. What Hold happened? On, we had, we had, I thought we wasn't gonna talk about that no more. <laughs> about the... I thought we had, you know it's kind of a low blow on your part. No, pause, <laughs> pause, but it's kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> the cheetah print. Hey, I was in Hawaii, bro. And when you in Hawaii and you just out there parasailing and doing all types of stuff. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with a little cheetah print. Yeah. Deep state. Yo. <laughs> Tell you, man. Definitely the white man. Hey, we, yeah, man. Definitely. I mean, we weren't even talking about no. We weren't even talking about none of the stuff that is that is uh, censorship worthy. <laughs> We ain't talking about no jabs, no no elections, no Jews, none of that stuff. We ain't had none of that. And they just they they sensed it. That's what it was. Yeah. Hey. You coming to say hi? Yeah, get on the camera. You wanna say hi? Say there you go. Hi. What's up? He said what's up. Oh, yeah, I don't know what happened. Yeah, everybody's coming back in. Fellas, it's back on. She just got to find it on YouTube. Thank you, though. She know what it is. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Oh, uh, Tia said congrats to the 5K. Thank you, Tia. Eric, I don't know, man. It just it just stopped working. It just stopped working. I don't know if people will come come over here or not. But yeah, man, I put all this advertisement out there. My Instagram, my YouTube, my so I got a phone call from Kofa now. Hold on a second, Kofa on here. Hold on a second. Oh yeah, I've been wanting to ask Kofa about uh Nick yeah, Saban. I got you. I'm about to... <laughs> Hello. What up, bro? What up, man? Yo, Che, you here, Kofa? Yeah, I hear him. All right, Sh- Kofa, you hear Shay? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Shay got a question for you, Kofa. What's the word, bro? What's going on, bro? How you been? Man, slow and steady, man. How everything your way? Oh, everything's cool, man. Every- you know what? And everything's going, everything is looking up because uh, I-, I-, I know I hate to bring this up, but over here, it's looking good on our end because the SEC is crumbling ever <laughs> since your boy left. It's open. It's open season hey, now. <laughs> <laughs> Look, bro, y'all got the infrastructure, man. Y'all got y'all got the money for the NIL deals. We don't have that in Bama. <laughs> <laughs> all, all we have is NASA, and that's federal money, so them players can't touch that. We're screwed. We got to ride on our yeah, old rep and hope something work out. 
Man, we we know it. We we could do a whole show on that because I'm not I'm not feeling this whole. You know, even though I feel like my team gonna benefit from the whole nil stuff, I don't like it. I'm just gonna be. I'm gonna put that out there. I know we that'll be like hours worth of content, but I'm just saying I don't like it. I want to go back to the old. I like it with how it was. I'm just saying. Yeah, them not getting paid. I want them to get paid, man. But I think once the money got involved and those companies got involved, it wasn't like the money was coming from the school or something. You know, something like the alumni. Like once the businesses actually got involved, it wasn't gonna. Uh, it wasn't gonna shake out any other way. That that part, I just, I'm not against the players getting paid, and and but I just think that, you know, it, it's kind of, it, it's or I'm more like I don't like the transfer portal. That's one one thing I don't like. I'm not really big on the transfer portal. All right, all right, before before we go any further, man, we start getting people to come back in. I saw Cole for Cole. All right, all right. And here we go. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was, I was tripping, man. I was like, damn, I was like, he only did 30 minutes for a five pick celebration. Like, nah, I don't know. Like it just, it just went out, man. You know how, you know how to, you know what it is? The white man heard me talking, talking to Shay. You know, like the black man and the Mexican man talking about books. <laughs> so, oh, no, shit. They like each other. Yeah. They, like the brown <laughs> they don't like the black and brown correlation. So they just, they just deleted the whole live. So that was it. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. We're I'm supposed back. to be talking I'm, I'm, about I'm our favorite rappers. Oh uh, yeah, all right, all right, all right. Boom, both of y'all, real quick. I got Kofi here on the phone. I got Shay here in the live. Shay, what's your top five? You can't say DJ Quick. You can't say um, Nipsey Hustle. I know that's in your top five, Shay. <laughs> How you gonna ask them in the top five and then take away two? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they might have been, but they not. They not in my top five because so so. You might not realize this, but I, I really, I, it's, I'm one of these type of people, right? Like, so what are we talking about here? I, I, I hate when people say, "What's your top five? and then they don't explain. Like, are we talking about like, like there's credentials to this? I think number, I think the number one, if we're gonna take all categories, number one is Jay of all time, and I say that, and not because I think he's the best rapper, but I think if you, if you were to have all the categories. He's probably top five in every category to a certain extent. So he's number one. Um, but I mean, I mean, we I mean, there's so many other ones that I think that are that is deserving. I don't really know how to put a top five. All right. I, I I'm a, I'm gonna disagree with you. I'm gonna disagree with this comment. DMX fabulous bust around Tupac and Laura Hill. Can't put Lauren Hill in nobody top five. I'm sorry. Ne- oh, that's yeah. horrible. You can't put Lauren Hill in the top that's five. That's horrible. That's horrible. That's horrible. <laughs> So, I'm, I'm, so I, and the reason I say it's horrible because she never had no one no one rap album. Like she had an album that she rapped on. Yeah, and she can rap. I yeah. give her that. See, that's what I'm saying. What are we talking about here? Now, if you if you would like just like lyrics, like who can rap, but but didn't really do a whole lot. Like Big L has to be in there. We got to talk about him, but he didn't really do a whole lot because I think what about he, cannabis? He's one of my favorite rappers of all time. Huh? What about cannabis? Cannabis, cannabis nah, man. His his album was whack though, man. He, he don't have a left <laughs> hand on. I'm right. sorry, like, like lyrical genius, but like the album was just it was really that bad. And people, even being from the south, but people get mad at me. I don't have Dre. I don't have three stacks in my top five for the same reason that Shay just mentioned about Lauryn Hill. We never heard a rap album, a rap, a solo rap album. True. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I think Andre 3000, they, they kind of make too much out of him. That's not, that's not saying that he can't do it. It's just that he just doesn't do it. So at what, yeah. at some point, like, it's almost like, it's like, it's like you've seen certain dudes that can ball, like they can play, oh, they, oh, but dude is, is tight, but he didn't do nothing in the NBA. Like, you know, there's a lot yeah, of basketball like, like players that Luke. came out. That's what I'm, yeah, that's a that's a good that's yeah. a good example. I was thinking about uh what's the name? Sebastian Telfair. He was one of the hardest ones coming out. Oh, God. Like, what what do you uh, do in the NBA? <laughs> no. Yeah. So, so so I I can give you my top five. I got it, go for. So my top five, and it depends on the day you ask me. I'm I'm a I'm All a right, some about January twenty fifth. <laughs> January fifth today? Yeah. Nah. So I got Nas at one. Okay. Scarface at two. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Those though, I flip flop those on like if you ask me on like you ask me on a Thursday, 
Tomorrow I might say Scarface is one. Okay. So I always flip them. So Scarface, Nas, Bun B. He doesn't get the credit he deserves, I believe. Um, damn, who, who do I have at number four? Shay threw me off with that big L. I ain't gonna cap. <laughs> uh, I, bro, I'm yeah, gonna be here. Head too. Pause. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but um, Nas, Scarface, Bun B, Pac, and I gotta go with Jay. I gotta go with Jay. See, I, I'm gonna say this, and I know it's kind of blasphemous to say this. When Shay put like Jaden in category as being like the best ever in all these different categories, how come Kanye can't be in that that category on that discussion? I don't think I. Don't, I think he can. Why can't he? Okay, I think he can. Yeah, yeah. definitely. He can. I don't, Kanye can know rap. I did, like, yeah, yeah. Eric but Jordan. Was Eric Jordan got Nas, Tupac, Bone Thugs and Harmony, Westside Connection, and Master P. I think Eric Jordan would hit every aspect of like each region <laughs> of the country. You got Midwest, <laughs> West Side, <laughs> the East that's Coast. That's also a top. Hey, look, that's also a top ten because Bone Thugs and Harmony and West Side Connection. You just threw like seven people in there. <laughs> fucking hilarious. All right, Colvin, hey. man. I appreciate you calling, checking in on me, and see what's going on, man. I know you got you probably using international minutes. Colvin's not in the country right now. You know what I mean? He's using his passport as a bro, as, as they say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so moving around a little bit. <laughs> he, he trying to find a brick lady. <laughs> but, man, it's, they, I thought it, I thought she turned herself in. She did. She did. Okay. Oh, she cool. Did? Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> he was, yeah. He was on the hunt. Like, <laughs> you want to find his own brick lady? <laughs> <laughs> not, not where I'm at. All right. But uh, I'm at an undisclosed location, but you'll see it soon. I'm getting ready to drop you a super dad film. <laughs> I, I appreciate you, man. All right, man. Y'all keep cooking. All right, later. All right, Kofa. Peace. All right. We hang up on Kofa. All right, so let's talk about Brick Lady, man. All right? That you threw me off at the top. And now you have me thinking about the top five. I'm not, I haven't really thought about this in a long time. I'm like, you know, that, that's that's that's... Because because I've had plenty of arguments about this throughout my life, and I don't know why people argue about it. Like my top five is so it's kind of like Eric Jordan's. I'm all over the all over the map with it, right? Well, so, you didn't. You never. You never told us I was top, your top five. I'm about to do it right now. I'm about to do it right now. I ain't want to tell Coco. So top five number one for me is Stickman the Dead Press, right? Number two is Lupe Fiasco. Number three is Jay Z. Number four is Black Thought, and number five is E Forty. Okay, that's why so I'm at this, with. This, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't. There's so here's here's how I, how I look at that, right? When 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 that's why I always say like, what are we talking about? Yeah, because because if you, if you're gonna say like, who's the best rap rapper? What I mean by that is like, who can sit down right now and just rap? And then we just sit here at the end and we judge who's the best. That's that's different. Now, if we're talking about who can who can make hits, who can sell records, who mm-hmm. can cross over, who can rap, who got bars, who got production, who got you know what I'm saying? Like that's yeah. why I say Jay. To me, he might not be number one in any of those categories, but he's top five in all of those categories. If you look at body of work, like that's why I said like Big L is one of my favorite rappers of all time, right? Mm-hmm. But I mean, he has like one album, and he and yeah. he's and he died. You know what I mean? So it's like like yeah. that's why people be like, well, Nipsey, but Nipsey had one album. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can't say that he's top five and he only had one album, regardless of the fact that both of them, you know, they deceased, so they couldn't put nothing out. But that's yeah. still, you know, I mean, we can say the same thing about Biggie. Biggie That's only what had I'm t- two. And, and and I'm gonna say something that that might get me banned from the West Coast, but Biggie was better than Pac. Oh yeah, you're he done. Did. You can't go outside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my, that's my, you know, in my opinion, I feel like rap, like as a rapper, that's what I'm saying. Like as somebody who could just get on the mic and 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 rap and I'm and make up, come up with, you know, 
you know, metaphors and clever, clever, you know, wordplay and stuff like that. I like Biggie better. You know what I mean? I thought he was more. Yeah. I thought he. I thought he was. He had some like. He was more gutter, more street than Tupac in his in his what he was. I mean, a lot of people say, well, "What about?" But but if you listen to like "Give Me the Loot" and all that, and like and like that, that stuff was that's he was like it was it was grimy like. I get yeah. that and that's money. The type of- I get that money. Shout out to Little Mega. Shout out to Osiris with ten dollars in the super chat. Oh, that's and my Kofi- boy. Yeah, what's up, Osiris? Yeah, Kofa did some shit that I can't even um. Describe so you'll see it when it comes up. I don't even know what's going on with the Kofa super chat that he sent me. I, I, I'm not good at math. I think he sent me twenty million dollars. I get that money. So, <laughs> I get that <laughs> no, 20, money. He sent me twenty thousand COPs. I don't know if that's Call of Duty money. I don't know what that is. So we'll find out when <laughs> YouTube well, figures out. He said he might have sent you some pesos or something like that. He <laughs> yeah, international, so. he sent me, remember? So, yeah, he sent me twenty thousand. <laughs> hey, he sent you twenty thousand or something that equal that comes out to three dollars and forty six cents. <laughs> <laughs> he is some third world country. Just, <laughs> just, just exploit, he's out there just exploiting some third world country right now. <laughs> Yo, you call my man call for a colonizer? <laughs> He said twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> oh my god, yo! <laughs> oh man, oh man! <laughs> Kofa, you gotta let us know what twenty thousand COPs is, cause I ain't trying to get um caught up by the feds, yo. <laughs> they already banned my live stream. I'm not trying to get caught up by the feds. <laughs> From Swiss bank accounts, uh. yeah, man. Shout out to Kofa Growth Talk Podcast, man. Oh yeah, um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but yeah, we we gonna continue with the hip hop talk, or we are gonna get back to the book? That's what you here for. Whatever, you're here man. Whatever you want to do. You here to pedal books to my audience? That's what you came here for. Your book, man. Pedal. Buy the book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what you know? You... <laughs> oh, that's Colombian pesos. I'm not balling like that. All right. So what? I need to know how much you sent me. Oh, okay. <laughs> 5000 for 5K. 20K, $5. That's like what, $20, right? $20? Yeah, I'll say that's $20. All right, so you, you, the, you the, um, stream, um, the live stream sponsor for tonight. So let, me put, let me change that real quick. Um, damn. I don't, I don't even know where we're going. I'm just all discombobulated because we didn't have um, my whole live got kicked off and everybody's gone but um all right one thing i I was interested in the book was that you kind of went into story mode like you went into like philosophical mode then you went to story mode why did you choose to do that um so so the short simple answer yeah just (laughs) to be honest is because i can (laughs) <laughs> I mean it's it, 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 it because because I, I feel like I wanted to, I wanted you to kind of get a more better understanding of of that type of uh, mindset you know what I'm saying so I could sit mm-hmm. here and I could tell you about certain things and be like this happened that happened this happened but I wanted to put the reader in that scenario and in that situation and what what people are thinking about and um you know so that that's really why i wrote it i mean i like to be honest with you it's easier for me to write like fictional stuff okay um and so so when i was when i was telling story when i was telling my story i was thinking of certain things that happened or and I'm, I'm gonna say this like not all those things are or i did or, or i was part of or are actually true they just they're just things that i've come across in my experiences right yeah but it's just more like i just wanted to i wanted you to kind of get a, a a more of a better understanding of the mindset because i feel like there's a certain mindset that leads people to do certain things and right. i want you to be sitting in that and put be in those shoes and see why people make these decisions because that always comes up. I, I literally just had a conversation with a family member like yesterday, and he and 
and we never really had this talk and he started really asking me like why why you do this why'd you do that you know mm-hmm. what i mean and so that's kind of why I, I started writing those stories is so that people can understand and see where you know people's minds are at in that situation yeah so now the story in this book is not a true yeah. story but it's based on a true story or just so the story the story uh, when I'm when when the parts when I'm talking when I'm just like telling like autobiographical stuff mm-hmm. that's true but okay. if you those interludes the interludes they're kind of like they're true but I'm not going to say that those things they're they're based more on on true events okay 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 yeah 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 I, at first I was like wait a minute I wasn't ready to like when I'm reading, I'm in the mood to read what I'm reading. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I'm reading this, and I see where you're going. And after that, you saw it like, oh, a story time. Like, wait, 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 what's going on? But I like the way you did it because, like you said, it gives a foundation on what it is that you, where you came from and how you got to where you're at. And I kind of like it, too, because, you know, like the mindset of a person in prison um, becomes the victim. Like, damn, man. I'm here because of this. Like, like for example, I, I was joking around saying that my live stream got canceled because of the white man. But, you know, it just could have happened a number of things. I, mean, I, I saw that it says the internet is not as fast as it should be in the area. So, they, you know, it just didn't work at that moment. It is what it is. So, like, instead of making those excuses or blaming other people, we look at for real reasons of why things are happening and, like, why you're in that circumstance. And I think you said in the book, why you was in prison, I think you, if I'm not mistaken, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think you said when you was in, um, what is it called, the hole or the shoe? Yeah. The shoe. And I think you said at that moment, you you became the most free you ever been at that moment. Is that something yeah. you put in the book? Yeah, you did say that. Yeah. 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 Well, how, how, let, let the people know, how did you become more free while you went, you know, isolated and locked up by yourself? Because, yeah, be, because I started taking responsibility for my actions. I started mm-hmm. holding myself accountable, and and when you, so I feel like that's 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 real freedom right there because yeah, let's put it like this: like if if let's let's just say this for example, like your live stream it went off, and if it's somebody else's fault other than your own, you have to wait for somebody else to decide to allow you to get back on, right? You have to. So there's nothing that you can do to control anything about yourself and anything about what you're trying to accomplish. If it's everybody else's fault for what happened to you, whether it's you've been to jail, whether it's you, you know, you, you didn't get the job you wanted. You, you're not, you're not in the relationship that you wanted to do. Then whoever's fault it is that you're blaming, you have to wait for them to decide to make the decision that, okay, now we're going to stop oppressing you. Yeah. And, you're, you're stuck at that point you're stuck at that point you're at a standstill and you're not going to do anything but once you start to say you know what before i start blaming everybody else let me look at myself and mm-hmm. let me make those changes first now you have control now you have yeah. power yep so at that point i realized that i was free because now i came to the realization sitting there i said well if i got here because i made bad decisions then the only way to get out of here is to start making better decisions. And so that just starts, it starts with small things. It started when I was in that situation, it started with getting up, you know, working out, reading, mm-hmm. making the decision to not do certain things that I've seen other people doing, which was laying around all day, watching TV, not working out snorting yeah. pills that they getting from the psych and stuff like that like and this stuff really people be doing and then they start yeah. going crazy like you're really you're not taking control of your life so i was more free once i once i abandoned those um uh those those concepts that were holding me back yeah so it's kind of like a video i did um earlier you know it was a uh, vlad tv talking about taraji's how how you know how she's complaining about not making the money i'm like you, if you got yourself in this house, why not get out that house? You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, we see movies all the time, all over social media. People do stuff independently. How come you can't do that with the resources you have, but instead you want to go on the breakfast club or go on wherever, Gail, 
Gail King show and talking about, oh, it's not my, you know, y'all not paying me enough. Go like, go get your own money. Go get your, go go take responsibility for what it is that you want to do. That's how I look at it. But you know, maybe I'm. I just, mean, Tyler Perry did it. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. there's there's a lot of people that have they, you know. It, because because it's easier it's easier to and I and I'm not I'm not really just saying this is Taraji because I don't I don't I didn't really like follow that whole situation like so I don't really know exactly what she was talking about but I'm just mm-hmm. I'm just going to say this in general in general it's easier to point the finger at other people and it's easier to blame somebody else and then try to petition other people to force those people to do what you want them to do. Yeah. It's it's easier to do that. It's easier to say, you know what? It's not I should be getting more money and instead of working harder or working smarter, mm-hmm. let's 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 force the government to use to to take more money from taxpayers and then give it to me. Yeah. Like it's easier to do that than to say, let me devise a plan. I'm I'm trying to get more people to come to my website or my store or come watch my movie or whatever mm-hmm. the situation may be. It's just easier to do that. And that's, yeah. and we, and that's why I said we're, we're prone to take the easy way out in life. We're prone to follow our lower nature. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the truth, man. It's like, you know, uh, me and my wife were talking about it. Like, you know, a lot of times people don't want to eat what they kill. They rather just go to the supermarket. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to go out and seek what it is that you want Instead of that, you want to, oh, let me just wait for somebody to do it for me. And I think once you wait for somebody to do it for you, you're going to get what you get. Same thing with fast food. Same thing with like eating Chick-fil-A every Thursday. If you were to make your own chicken at, on Thursdays instead of eating Chick-fil-A, the chicken would be more healthier than Chick-fil-A giving you. The problem is, is I don't know how to make the Polynesian sauce. <laughs> 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 uh, a little inside joke So Shay always get Chick-fil-A every Thursday I don't know what it is That's something they do in their household You know my nah, we, we ain't really We don't really do it as much My wife is so tired of Chick-fil-A And I'm, and, and now that you brought it up so many times I'm like I want to go to Chick-fil-A And I know she's going to be like You always want to eat chick I'm tired of Chick-fil-A <laughs> We ain't had it in a minute though So at least she didn't. she hasn't had it in a minute So Yeah I might, I might, I not, I might be able to work that tonight. That's what I'm thinking about. Oh, there you go. See, don't, 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 don't put me involved in it. When you get jammed up, don't say my name, like Jeezy said. I mean, so. Look, man, my my wife ain't. She's she not gonna go for it. She gonna be like, I don't care what Laurent's talking about. You're not getting Chick Fil A. <laughs> She'd be like, I don't care. Where's he at? Is he here? <laughs> All right, there's another part of your book, man. I wanted to get to. Um, while I'm looking for that, explain to people what the No Spoon podcast is. Let's take an interlude since you got interludes in your book. Because everybody be like, What's "Oh man, No Spoon." The No or well, No Spoon is just if you, people go back to the Matrix. Remember the movie The Matrix, and there was that yeah. one part in the. Um, when the kid was 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 moving the spoon with his mind and he was telling Neo, like, don't try to bend the spoon because mm-hmm. that's impossible. Only realize the truth. And he was like, what truth? He said that there is no spoon. And only then you realize that it's not the spoon that bends, but your own mind. So, you know, the whole point of that movie was they was in the Matrix. And once you understood that you were in the Matrix and you can be able to 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 transcend the boundaries of the Matrix because it wasn't real. And I feel like you know, there are certain things that we're in a matrix and, and we just talked about it right now. Just that whole, you know, kind of like victim mentality that puts you in the matrix. It keeps you it keeps it keeps barriers upon your life. Like you can't do certain things because this is happening to you or that happened to you. Things that you can't control. And you spend time worrying about that instead of realizing those things don't really exist as long as you just constantly focus on yourself. And then you'll be able to bend the spoon without real without using any anything because that spoon's not real. Just like those yeah. boundaries ain't real. Just like those ceilings that you put on yourself ain't real. So yeah. the no spoon podcast is like that's that's basically what it comes down to, in a nutshell. All right, pause. It's, it's, <laughs> there's two two parts I want to um, bring from this this book, an excerpt from the Freedom Doctrine, Book One. 
The extremists are those who want to redefine reality, uproot and dismantle the nuclear family, and cause nothing but chaos and confusion amongst God's greatest creatures. That, I thought that was a bar. I thought, you know what I was going to do? I was going to make a short and use that line and take the credit for it and get all the money from Instagram to YouTube. But I was like, I'm, I want you to talk about it first before I do that. This is crazy, man. That's crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> this book ain't even been out a month and I'm already getting copyrighting violations. <laughs> You wonder why your live streams get taken down. You, 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 you. <laughs> uh, man. But but I mean that is that that is extreme. Yeah, we want to redefine everything. We want to redefine reality. You want to redefine things that we know to be true and we've always known to be true, and we want to redefine that. And because I say no, I, I don't. I don't think that that's true. I'm an extremist. No, nah, you're the extremist because you wanted to you wanted to uproot everything. <laughs> it's like I'm going back to earlier. Like, there's nothing you can sit here and tell me. Like, if you said, "Man, we're gonna talk about this to kids. We don't, or we're gonna, or we're gonna allow a drag queen to sit here and and a, a grown man to dress up like a woman and to read books to little kids. Mm-hmm. And no, and nobody's right mind would they be like, okay, yeah, cool, that's what's up. No, nobody. Like, your first thought is to be like, what? Yeah. But you start to experts come into play and start saying, well, you know, you know, that's kind of a, a symptom of, of your bigotry that lies dormant within you. And and all this doing. No, 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 bro. No, nah, <laughs> it ain't none of that. It <laughs> <laughs> ain't none of that. It's wrong. And I'm not going for it. And that's just what it is. And if you don't like it, uh, I don't really care. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. yeah, it is extreme and they are extremists. And that's what it is. And. You know, I'm going to stand on that. And, you know, like they like the kids say nowadays, I'm going to stand on business. There you go. Supposed to leave that in 2023. I know, right? right? That's kind of bad. (laughs) I feel you. I'm so, my bad. My bad. Take that one back. Edit that. Edit that out. Don't, don't, uh, I'm embarrassed. All right. So here we go. From the same, same paragraph, right? That I was going to put on my next post I was going to do on Instagram. I think it's cliche to say that masculinity is under attack. I also think it's this this ingenuous. I'm not saying that there's not an agenda to emasculate men or demon was it demor demonize demonize excuse me traditional masculinity. I'm saying that a lot of people championing this stuff are really in it for other reasons. In the last few years, we have seen the rise in such anti-feminist movements such as MGTOW, which I never knew the acronym for that. I just seen that sometimes. I never knew what that meant. Um, men going their own way and red pill ideology to name a few as a response in the heavy dose of feminism that has been interjected in the mainstream narrative social media personalities such as the late kevin samuels andrew tate and the fresh and fit podcast are just some of the few examples have benefited from this pushback needless to say there's a tremendous market for this rhetoric um in what called the manosphere the uh the once obscured corner of the internet devoted to male empowerment. For this reason, I'm purposely avoiding structuring the series around masculinity under attack. How come you don't want to be a, a part of the masculinity under attack crowd? Uh, first and foremost, because they're corny. Like I, I, I <laughs> it is. It's like cornballism one on one. Like you know what I mean. Don't want to be don't want to be associated with it. I yeah. thought it, I thought it was cool at first, like when they first started coming out. I'm like, oh, okay. And then like like I like Kevin Samuels. You know, I like some things Andrew Tate says. I like some things. I, I mean, everybody says some things that has some validity. I don't not disagreeing with a lot they do, but it's just yeah. becoming like a cornball fest. You know what I mean? So, where where goofballs get together and they try to tell that they have to remind themselves that they're alphas. You know what I mean? Instead of just going out and proving it, All right. it's just it's All just right. goofy to me. This, 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 I want to I want to uh, expound on that, right? So I'll put Andrew Tate in that goofball category, right? He got a lot of goofball characteristics. So does Fred, Fresh and Fit, right? What about Kevin Samuels? <laughs> yeah. No, I like Kevin Samuels. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, so the things that they say is true. Like, there's a lot of tr- there's truth in what they're saying. Um, 
I don't, I don't. So what the red pill has done now is like, it's kind of like become this. And I'd like to say it, it's almost like feminism for men. Right. And mm. so it's almost like there, there, the, there is no solution to any of this. It's almost like, okay, well, marriage is, is one sided, which I agree with. Um, so don't get married, sleep with as many women as possible, make a lot of money, get jacked. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And it's almost yeah. like, but I, I don't know. I don't. I, I think there's more to life than that. I think there is some virtue into raising a family and to finding somebody that you can spend the rest of your life with. I think. I think that. And this is just, I mean, you know, you people. I might. This might offend some people, but if you're having a relation, having a problem with your your woman, yeah, it could be in the sense that you're trying to trying to be with a modern woman who wants to think for themselves and be independent and not be up under a man. In that case, you probably shouldn't have married her. Two. If you was really the man that you said that you was, you wouldn't have no issues like that. Like Jay Z mm-hmm. said, he had ninety nine problems, but I, I, I got a lot of different problems. But I don't have no problem with my my wife. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Like to me, it just seems like a bunch of men who are trying to get women that don't really want to be in that type of role and force them, and then act like, oh, it's 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 something wrong with women. Like I don't, I don't see it that way. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So it's that. And then not only that, but they all listen to Pearl. And I ain't got nothing <laughs> nice to say about Pearl <laughs> at all. I want to get to this comment right here from um, Kofa. Channel member. He said, yeah, those guys are off. But that's not the main. Oh, that's not main, though. Pro- the main thought, I guess, thought process of the manosphere. I guess it's more complex. But, like, when I do see the quote-unquote manosphere, I do see what you're seeing, Shay. You know what I'm saying? I do see that. I do see that. Like like you said, like the... the I don't there's know, a lot like of good the, things. Yeah, there's a lot is. of good things, and there's things I agree with. And I'm not saying that it's all it's all bad. And I'm just saying... I, I So, for, for the... For the um, so for for the sake of what 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 you just read the excerpt that you just read I'm speaking to men I'm speaking to masculinity but I don't want to be a part of that crowd you know what I mean mm-hmm. I would rather talk you know so so purposely that's why I said purposely I'm not saying I'm not pushing this under oh masculinity is under attack because then you just say well here goes another Andrew Tate here goes another uh, Pearl yeah anyway and so what i'm saying is <laughs> yeah she pearl like to think that she could talk she could speak for men that's my biggest issue with pearl is she thinks that mm-hmm. this is how men think well how, how do you know like you you don't even have a man so i don't even know how you just how you can even speak on how a man thinks but that's a whole other thing you know you all right i'm, I'm gonna tell you where uh from what you're saying i'm not i'm not really to subscribe to Pearl, you know what I'm saying? But I think Pearl comes from that um, entitlement of white privilege of telling somebody, I hate using those buzzwords, but I'm using them anyway, that that white liberal woman telling you you should be offended by this racist word. That white liberal woman, that's where oh, that's coming from. She's coming from that same She's club. just doing it for men. Yeah, she's just she's doing, doing it, it for men. men. And now she's doing it more right wingers. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you should be offended by this. This is how women should be. Like you said, this woman don't have a man. So, like, when people are not in relationships, it's hard to take that person serious that's speaking as talk. Like, I'll give you another example. Um, Jason Whitlock always talking about family this, family that. You have no wife. You have no kids. It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work for me. You know what I mean? It doesn't work. So, when I hear that, I'm like, Why right. didn't you do it? That, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. why, then why don't you do it? If, that, if that's the key, What's the problem? why didn't you do it? Why you don't have that key? Why is that lock still locked for you? I don't get it. You know it's, what I mean? Like it, it's it's the same. It's the same in it if you reverse it, right? If you it's the same as somebody like a DL Hughley who is telling you that you're oppressed because you're black and you can never get ahead while you're driving a Bentley and living in, in Calabasas. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, then how come you're okay? Or to tell you, or like or 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 him saying and I know he has a book where he says that he's where he talks about the worst the worst place for a black person to live is in the white is in the minds of white people. So you moved out of predominantly black and brown South Central L.A. to move into predominantly white Calabasas. Uh, I, if if it was so dangerous to be around white people, 
why did you just move to a, with a bunch of white people? It's the same thing in reverse. Like if yeah. if if it's so bad, why are you doing it? And if it's having family and having a man and doing all this is so is the way we should go. Why didn't you do it? It, it goes to a post that I seen you posted on your Instagram, and I'm not leaving no more comments. I don't want nobody at me, but you left a post saying that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate the engagement, though. You know, you know, I got you, I got you. You know how you know yeah, how the yeah. algorithm work. Do me that but, layup, um, bro. That that that. that, <laughs> that you, yeah, quick. I was. Yeah. I was Gary Payton. You were Sean Kemp. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> but um, how you put a post up about um, like Katanji Brown Jackson, um, what's it, um, Kamala Harris, um, Iman, was it the Iman Omar, whatever it is? They all tell Ilhan, you about Ilhan white Ilhan supremacy. Omar, yeah. They all tell you about white supremacy, but at night they go lay up with a white man. White supremacy, white supremacy can't be that bad if your spouse is white. That's like me saying about my wife, oh man, I can't stand these natural hair girls spending $20 on shampoo. And she and she's a natural hair girl. Like, no, I like that shampoo. <laughs> like, I'm using that $20 bougie ass you know what I'm saying, shampoo. That's what it is. <laughs> Using that shampoo. <laughs> oh, I've been using that shampoo. Yeah, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't buy shampoo since I got married. I'm not. <laughs> please. Oh, man, look. Man, look. <laughs> My wife, does, that's what she do. She do hair. I know, yeah. Right? So we got about like four different conditioners and shampoos in the shower. I I pick one. I Today, I'm like, <laughs> today is coconut day. <laughs> 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 oh man! Bless, yeah. bless because because if I went to the if I went to the store, I come back with like Pert Plus, and she'd be like, "What is this?" <laughs> <laughs> Pert Plus, yo! I haven't heard. I even know they still made Pert Plus, yo. Damn. Man, for real, I, I probably even don't. I don't know. I, that's how long it's been since I bought some shampoo. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Yeah, like, like I don't know. It's 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 real interesting because, like, I think my my content, like, you know, today's the 5K celebration. I think my content is starting to grow because I'm not trying to have that us versus them conversation. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to have that us versus them. I'm trying to have that nuanced conversation. I'm trying to have a conversation about growth instead of saying, this is this person's fault. Like, I did it. And it's hard as a content creator to do that because... The algorithm don't know how to, you know, put your stuff out there. That's why I'm trying to do email lists and stuff like that, right? Oh, she go. My wife talking about she gonna have to hide her stuff because I be using it all. Like, <laughs> 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 oh, let me see this way. She said, "No, I just spoke to him about my condition and how his little waves using all my products." Yo, listen. <laughs> I, I when I moved to Atlanta, right? I'm gonna just move sidebar real quick. When I moved to Atlanta. I got a call from the beach. It was like, yo, we need you to come back to New York because we don't have no more waves at the beach. <laughs> I'm going to give you... Um, if you want, man, I'm going to give you some time to edit that part out. We're going to edit that out. Wow. All right, let's continue on, man. But, um, but yeah, it's hard... I for will. the algorithm to push my content to certain, I guess, people, right? So, like, yesterday I did a video on, um, like, how Republicans and Democrats approach black voters, right? So, I gave two examples, right? I had a, the, the Tim Scott video of him saying, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm like, yo, you went full... <laughs> Miss Rousseau, right? Like you, you, you played that I caricature. Didn't, I didn't even see that? Yeah. I didn't oh see man, that. yeah. You gotta see. I just posted on my Instagram and everything like that. So I posted that video. Then I talked about like how <laughs> black politicians, like Joe Biden, is going to the church and they got these old as elder churchmen circling around Joe Biden like he did Thanksgiving dinner and they all praying over Joe Biden, talking about some, yo, um, please God, please protect our leader. Like they literally saying protect our leader, and it's like. Politicians don't really have no direction on how they want to speak to a black voter, like say for myself as independent. If I choose to vote for either party, I want to see policies. I don't want to see Tim Scott, you know what I'm saying, with the 
with the cane and the tap shoes looking like Mr. Mr. Um, what's the, what's my man from Planters? The Planters nut. <laughs> <laughs> with the Mr. top Peanut. hat and all. Yeah, I don't want to hear that, right? <laughs> oh, here they go in the comments. Here they go. Blaze said, I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> they go Lex Corbo. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> <laughs> we having fun here. We having fun, man. But, but yeah, so like, I yeah. put a comp. If I put something out there like that, it's not really us versus them. That's more my experience, right? Thank you, Kofi, Mr. Peanut. That's who you know. What I'm saying Tim Scott looking like Mr. Peanut with the little monocle and the top hat and the cane. You know, what I'm saying does even Donald Trump look uncomfortable when he did that? He looked uncle. He was like, come on, man. This is not it. Like, I'm already doing good. I'm already doing good with like, you know, black people starting to come towards my side. And here you go. I'm sick and tired of me. And his eyes got all big. Like everything, this all the characteristics of that, he did that in real time. It's he was so going cheesy, like this. Uh, he was like, yo, yeah. uh, uh, like, I can't hear you. This is Trump. I'm like, yo, my man, like, come on. Trump is doing okay. Trump is ascending, and you want to start being um, you making it worse. Yeah, you yeah, make being you, you, <laughs> you bring yeah, right, you down. <laughs> the WB frog. You know about the WB frog? Like he was like man. Remember him? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got another WB. another analogy that he yeah. was. He was uh, you know Desmond Pfeiffer. Who? All right, a lot of people don't know about Desmond Pfeiffer. Desmond Pfeiffer was a a TV sitcom. That came on UPN, right? This show was literally about the first American slave. We got a comedy about the first American uh-huh. slave. <laughs> I, yo. I don't remember that. I don't remember that. <laughs> I had like four UPN. episodes. Yeah. I remember UPN and WB. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they had Desmond Pfeiffer, dog. That's what he was. He was Desmond Pfeiffer in real time. The first American slave. I compared it to... um. To Virgil and and Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase, that's what it looked like from wrestling. Yeah, that, I mean Tim Scott is is weird, bro. They're just it, it's a bunch of I don't know, man. I don't know. Y- you know, I just feel like you know if you look at like if you now going back to what you're saying like about Trump, like Trump is winning because he's not really talking about that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's not, and he's not really like pushing a a racial agenda, and and specifically, like he's not specifically being like we gonna go after black voters, we gonna go after Hispanic voters. Yeah, we he just kind of like Trump is just getting up there and just and just running his mouth. That's all he's really doing, and yeah. people are feeling it. You know what I mean? I mean that's really it. He's not doing a whole lot. He's not really doing much. He's just sitting up there, just you know, just talking and and and. It's it's working, so yeah. I think it would be very bad for him to start now saying, "Well, let's target women, or let's target gays, or let's target." Mm-hmm. Like I think people are getting tired of that, and they seeing through all that when you're just making initiatives for certain groups of people. It's look, it's it's coming off as kind of like, "All right, man, like we get it, we know, you know." Yeah. But what, what are you going to do though? What what are we doing here? Like that's 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 I think that's where people are at. Like nobody really like here anymore so much like the race thing the gender thing all that type of stuff people are kind of like all right like that we we did that and Mm -hmm. and but what are we doing like what are we doing like i get it you know what i'm saying you went to a you went to the church you put some hot sauce on your food now you (laughs) want everybody to vote for you now but you ain't done nothing you know yeah so i think that's like you're gonna see more of that like and that's why I think Trump was kind of looking like, bro, I'm winning. What are you talking about? Like, yeah, I mean, your man was. When I saw the eyes go, like he's like, and he, his neck tilted, the eyes <laughs> and the neck tilt. That combination right there set us back to Desmond for fight for days. Like, not the neck tilt, <laughs> and I'm like, nope, Delhi. I'm like, oh my god, fam. Like, why did we just like how you blackface your own self and you black like? <laughs> and and, went, and then I seen he went I seen he went and got engaged. Oh yeah, yeah. To this, I'm not gonna get involved in that. You know what I mean? If, if that's what he want to do, <laughs> it's just. Cat Williams said 2024 is a is a, the year of the truth, and 
truth will come out, man. That's why I'm leaving alone. A lot of stories I be coming across, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Hey, did, you here, the, so. did you see the Did you see the SNL thing they did on Cat Williams? I seen the clip of it, but I didn't, I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. <laughs> but he was like, he was like three, three, three things. He said three things I never lied about. He said I'm five foot three. I ain't never told a lie, and I'm six foot four. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Nah, yo, I saw I saw a clip. Right? I saw a clip of um. It was Metro Boomin. Metro Boomin, the um, producer, he because yeah. I think um, Twenty One Savage was on Cat um, on Shannon Sharp show, and he was like, "How he's so he's so smart, right?" I think Twenty One Savage probably is smart, but he said how he's so smart and how he want to spell and be in fifth grade because he spelled super calibristic actually all the Like I can't even say the word, but you know the word I'm talking about. He said he spelled that and yeah. the spelling bee in fifth grade, and that's how he won. What's going on, Drew? So that's how he won the spelling bee. And he's like, come on, Faye, you know you ain't with no damn spelling being fifth grade. But maybe he did. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, if you don't know, um, 21 Savage is not American. He's from UK. Yeah. So he probably came with, like, UK standards coming to East Atlanta. And East Atlanta <laughs> got poor-ass standards. And he probably did win the spelling bee because he came from UK. So that's hey. a possibility. Maybe I mean maybe maybe that's just a new thing. Everybody capping in 2024. So, Yo. you know. Maybe that's just a new thing, you know. All right, let me ask you a question real quick. I don't know if you've seen this or not. And I was talking to my boy Josh about this last night. Um, did you see this whole thing with the Brit girl situation and the guy that came out and was, you know, saying that this is his side of the story? That um, I've seen like hearing bits and pieces of it. Um, I didn't really like. I mean, I, I remember when it happened. I remember we were talking. I think we were talking about it when it. Yeah, happened. that's how long ago it was. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. living here. You was the one, you you was the one who was telling me about the prosthetics and the the fake. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I was yeah. like, man, yeah, 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 yeah. I can see that. Yeah. All right. This this what I'm this what I'm gonna say right here. I'm leaving the brick girl situation alone from here on out because I see the play. You know, I be having my conspiracy theory. I see the play. What's going on having a brick girl? So, you know, she got arrested, right? You know, she turned herself in. I don't know if you know all that or not. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. All right. So let me just give you guys a recap why I think it's going to be done. So Brick Girl was charged with um, felony by deception, right? Felony by, by deception because she raised $40,000 from a crime that Houston Police Department said that did not happen. So now <laughs> she was supposed to turn herself in to the authorities and she was on a run for a few days. She got, she got tied up with the Black Panthers or something like that. Like a whole bunch of shit that was going on with that, right? She finally turned herself in. And she posted bond for ten thousand dollars, and I think it was um, take heed to the message. I was saying in her chat, this this girl not going to jail. So now think about how big this story was, right? How big the story was, how everybody talking about it, how we had all these think pieces and written articles and all this gender war back and forth. Chatter, you know, everybody from Chattanooga talking about oh, Brit girl is. The problem between why black men don't want to um, protect black women and all this type of stuff, right? Whole bunch of things going on. Everybody from Chattanooga. This girl raised $40,000 she did not get. The man she accused of hitting her did not go to jail. Why is she going to go to jail? How is she going to go to jail? What? I mean, she committed a crime, but nobody was harmed in the crime. She just had a whole bunch of stuff going online. And I think when she's not going to go to jail, it's going to be rinse and repeat. Here we go again. Black women not held accountable. She not going to go to jail. I see the play already. She's not going to jail. And everybody's going to be all upset. You're going to see all these think pieces all over again. It's going to be the same thing again. Yeah. I mean, I agree with you. I think that's that's what's going to happen. I mean, you can't, but you got to be able to see that. Like you ever see, like she didn't really do nothing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, how about, how about we take some ownership, those that donated to her? And say, why didn't, why did, first of all, why did you feel like you needed to donate? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, again, I think we had talked about this before. Like, um, I, I think, I think the only obligation that you have is to protect your woman. You know what I mean? Yeah. And <clears throat> when women don't feel like they need to be married or they need to be with a man. Okay. Then 
then you, then you don't get the benefits of being with a man. You know what I mean? You don't get the mm-hmm. benefits of that. And in an ideal society, then you would be with somebody who would be there to protect you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, so that's how I see it. Like, you know, you I don't I don't I don't really look at it in that sense. I have an obligation to protect my wife. Right. And that's it. You know what I yeah. mean? I I don't even have an obligation to protect my mother. That's my father's job. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that I wouldn't, but what I'm saying is my obligation, first and foremost, is to my wife. Yeah. She, and and, I and, it, she, and, it, and it works that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's basic. You know what I'm saying? And right. Not to mention, too. Now, say if you were to go out and protect some woman, right? Quote, unquote, protect some woman that's in Walmart fighting. And something happened to you. How mad would your wife be at you? It just happened. You good? Oh, you on mute. So oh, hold on. There you go. Oh wait. Oh man. And that's the that's the that's the that's the problem right here. I wait wait to shave fit fix his mic. He got this core from Amazon that's got three stars. But Blaze, you're right. The narr- they donated because the narrative was black men were seen as the villains. It's the us versus them mentality. It's you good now, Shay? I think so. I, can you hear me? Yeah, you better. Good. Yeah, I hear you now. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. 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 You can't have a. I don't know what happened. You can't have a three hundred dollar mic in a two dollar cord. That's like putting. <laughs> See that? Hey, hey. <laughs> let's get back to the let's get uh, let's get back to the, the stay on topic here. That's the problem. This, the, this why you this why you, this why like because you were muted at first. It had nothing to do with my stuff. No, it just here. said that my stuff you, been working. You were just muted right on, now on the green room. I right. I'm not gonna argue with you, man. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's, do, let's get <laughs> like back I to said, the topic. When please. you got a three hundred dollar mic and a two dollar for the people, man, we're not here for. <laughs> <laughs> and we're here for the people, bro. We're here for them. Like they don't want to hear about this. They want to hear about uh, our our take on 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 the brick. Go ahead, come on, let's go. No, what but I, I was asking you, you know, if something were to happen to you, protecting somebody in out in the open or whatever out in the field, say you at Chick Fil A, and something happened to you, how would your wife feel about that? You going out your way to protect somebody? Well, I mean, again, you know, first of all, like I said, my obligation is to her. Um, Mm -hmm. So I need to make sure that I do everything to protect her. You know, obviously, it's kind of hard. You you put in a situation, if you see a woman being attacked or something like that, you know, as a man, you wouldn't want to step in and and help. The only problem is, is that out here, we see a lot of women that... um, that they they're kind of putting themselves in these situations, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen. You know, you can go, you man. Look, I used to ride the, I used to ride the train through uh, Hollywood at four thirty in the morning. I've seen a whole lot of stuff going on there. Men, the women fighting the with each other. Yeah, men and women fighting with each other. Transgenders. I I, mean, I'm, I I can tell you, I went up to a situation one time where I seen a man just beating a woman. She he was just beating her. And I started, and the closer I got, because I'm like, well, what's going on over here? I started walking over there. I realized that's not a woman. So yeah. I was like, well, okay, <laughs> well, you on your own, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so, but those are the type of things that make you be like, man, I'm not getting involved because what would have happened if I'd have gotten involved in that situation? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm over here trying to defend this other man, this grown man from fight. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah I see what, what, what JC said right there. I've been there. I would never do it again. Of course, because yeah. like, that's what makes everybody kind of pause and be like, I'm not going to I'm not going to get involved again. My obligation is to come home to my wife. A special and if she's, thank and you if I, from the heart. Yeah. If I got, you know, killed or if I got, you know, arrested for trying to help some smoker crackhead that was fighting over, you know, the twenty dollars that with her trick. How's that? Mm-hmm. What What kind of like now I can't take care of the responsibilities that I have. So, you know, I feel like. 
everybody says, well, men should protect women, and I believe that. But but the way we protect women is for one, we should uh, we should mar- we should seek to marry them, mm-hmm. despite what Pearl says, right? <laughs> and then we should, but we should also protect them with our intellect and our brain and being able to show and, and being able to give some type of game to them and that's how we protect you know what i'm saying yeah. so um a lot of times women you and you run into a lot of women and i'm not saying this to all women but it is becoming like a theme especially on the internet that you can't tell a woman nothing i'm mm-hmm. especially especially a man so if if i'm trying to tell you like look you probably shouldn't go to that house with that dude. You don't really know him. You shouldn't go home with him. And you're sitting there saying, I, don't, I shouldn't, I'm not going to listen to you. You can't tell me I can do what I want. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I gave my, I gave you my advice. You didn't want to hear it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or you shouldn't go to that area at night. It's not a safe place. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like there mm-hmm. it is there. I tried to protect you. You didn't want to listen to it. Now you gonna call me and want me to go over there. There've been too many incidents, bro. There've been a lot of incidents where people, have put their neck out on the line. I per yeah. I personally ran in to the dudes one or at least one of the dudes that was got convicted for uh for killing um a dude from the Steve Harvey show. Uh, uh, Romeo, uh, right? Romeo, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I heard that story. I yeah, mean, I heard the story of the yeah, guy getting and, killed. But give a little backstory. Well, the story, to the, sto- keep- the story, the story was is that he he the dude I knew. Um, he was related to the, to, so he was relate. They were cousins, him and his, him, the dude that actually, that did it, they were cousins and his cousin on his other side was the girl Romeo was messing with. And I guess they had gotten into an argument. So she called him and said he tried to rape her. And so dude went over there and ended up killing Romeo and the, it come to find out like it was all, she was just mad because he was he he didn't he didn't want to be with her and he left and he was leaving her and so she she made up a whole story and this dude went and him and, and his other cousin went you know and and now they got life in prison you know what i'm saying so one dude oh, is dead and two dudes are in prison and the girl i don't i, I think she she ended up getting She's like free. probation yeah, yeah she, she got free. like probation so I, or I, I see people on social media talking about it saying like damn this is fucked up the, the person who's behind the death of Romeo is on TikTok making TikToks with, with her granddaughter. Like, it's fucked up. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, even like the, the, the Travis Rudolph story. How yeah. they went over to this house to fight this dude over a lie because this dude's sister was mad because her boyfriend didn't want to be with her no more, but she was cheating on her husband. It's like, you know your sister is for the streets. And you want to go take you and two of your boys over there to fight somebody and one of your boys get killed? How could you look your boy, mom's in the eye or anybody that's related to him in the eye knowing that you get your boy up to go fight for your sister that's in the streets or for the streets that's cheating her husband? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So these are the type of situations that you'd be like, you know, I, I I ask a lot of questions, bro. I'm asking tons of questions. I'm not even well, getting involved in the conversation. <laughs> Was that shit so strange? Yo, are you like, oh, is that a, no? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Mm-mm. Yeah, cause 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 me and my wife is in the house at nighttime. When y'all out there running around on the streets, we in the yeah. house chilling. I don't have to go out there and put out no fires that she she started. Yeah, we on the same page. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we on the same page. So. You know, if if you having an issue and you getting done bad and then you want to run a pearl for advice and say that women are, are terrible, you know, maybe you should have maybe you should have been maybe you should have been a man that try to put your wife on the same page. I don't know. Yeah. That's just my opinion. Yep. So Kofa asked me to um did I tell you about my brick lady theory, right? It's not a theory, it's a, I guess it's a conspiracy theory. So no, I, I mean I've, I've heard you say plenty of theories on this. I want to hear. This might be a new one though. It is a new one. I don't share this. I never share this online. I, I only share this in phone conversations and text messages because you know I don't have no proof of this, right? I think me not having proof of this is irresponsible to put online. But since Kofa asked me to do it, I'm gonna do it anyway, right? Because you know it is what it is. 
All right. So when the interview came out of the man um, Olin Douglas, right, the why the mm-hmm. guy who got accused for hitting uh, Rhoda Osmond in the head with a brick, right? When it came out that he was the man that hit it with the brick, and the story that was started unfolding that he explained what happened that night. So he said he met her in the club, right? Just yeah. Let me paint this picture for you. He met her in the club. She had a mask on. He pursued her, got convinced her, hey, let's go to this after party, me and you, and, you know, a couple of our friends. And when they got into the car, they got into an argument, right? And when they got into the argument, um, Rhoda, which is a brick girl, started hitting him first. He hit her back with a water bottle, right? He said he hit her. He hit her back with a water bottle, and that's how her face walled up. So... For them to get to that situation or why um, they got together is, I think, the most interesting thing. So now, if now, like, this is me and you, right? Me and you, we identify as straight heterosexual men, right? We don't play those games. We understand what we want. You know what I mean? We, we good at what we want, right? So now, if you see a woman that's in a club with a mask on, Rhoda is about six feet one, right? She got cigarette voice. So tall woman, mask on. I mean, she is stacked like big titties, big ass, like BBL type look, but she's tall as hell with a raspy voice that sounds like she smokes cigarettes. My spider senses start tingling like that's a man, right? I would think that's a man. You got a mask on in the club. So now this dude, if you see the interview, he has... You know, female tendencies, I'm going to just say in the interview. Okay. Right? Yeah. He got female tendencies. Now, you take somebody that's 6'2, raspy voice, mask on, you get to a club, you get into the car. Now, you find out that this person is not what you thought it was, aka a transformer. And now y'all get into an altercation. That's my my theory. I can see that. That's my theory. And and, and, and he's not going to actually say that because he's embarrassed to say it. And she's not going to say it because she's embarrassed. Right. I, Breaking no, news. Yeah. Breaking news. Listen. You heard Shay, it here. Broken traditions. There's no way that me being a heterosexual man see a woman at 6'2 with a cigarette voice. I'm not doing it. A I'm mask you got on. a new With a mask on and Newport voice, I have no I way. I have no way that to, to identify that you are a... a, 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 a Cisgender woman. I have no way to no way to identify that. I, that's not nothing I would pursue as a straight man. I'm not doing. Yeah, it. I can see it. I can I'm see not it. doing it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I can see it definitely. Nope. I think you broke this one wide open. I think this is the pause. <laughs> I think this is it right here. <laughs> Mike has bad knees. So every time, every time I say her height, she gets taller. <laughs> Right, Man, right, she, right. She's yo, she's huge, bro. She's huge. She looked yeah, like Brian like Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's huge, bro. Like she's like Giannis out there. Yeah, <laughs> with a Not mask Giannis. on. <laughs> Talking about yo. What you, you want to do tonight? No, you're not coming to me. Six <laughs> ten. Yeah, yeah. Looking bro? like the cookie, sounding like the cookie monster with right, a mask. Right. I'm not Post, buying it. I'm not. She posting you up. She posting you up on the, yeah. on the dance floor. <laughs> I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it, yo. I think that's what happened. That's my opinion. And when they showed that dude, uh, I can see it. And they, they showed the dude. I tried not. I tried to be, you know, just tell the story. I didn't want to get too deep into the weeds of his mannerisms. His fake Louis Vuitton, all that stuff. I'm like, yo, dog, a lot is not adding up. It's not adding up. Then, man, it's listen, I'm leaving that story alone. That whole brick brick girl story. Then we got this lady, the queen of accountability. From what I understand, is she's still in credit, and now she got a whole warrant out for her arrest. So the, the lady who's giving the information to the police department, it's a better chance that she's gonna go to jail than the brick lady. It's too much stuff in the back. I, w- I wonder what jail brick lady going to. That's the thing we need to figure out. What side? Did she go to the right or to the left? Or was they like? <laughs> <laughs> so Cobra said, dude, after the club, he said, excuse me, man, but where's your dick? <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh man, here you go again, man. Yo, four five hundred dollar mic and a dollar fifty cord, yo. This dude shit. <laughs> Good now. Yo. Yeah, everybody, please buy Shade Book so he gets some type of audio <laughs> <laughs> connection. Like, you know the pro, I promise you, the proceeds are going to go to an audio interface and something else. Like, there's no reason for my man to live like this, you know? Hey, look, man. Or. <laughs> Look, man, if you go to the Cash App dollar sign the No Spoon Podcast, we can uh we can make some donations. Man. Man, you ever just you ever just did you ever just did something like real ridiculous? And you was like, man, I I'm I'm being ridiculous right now, but you don't care. That was me earlier today, right before I got on this. Like mm-hmm. I should have been home a whole lot sooner. But I'm dry. It usually takes me about like 20, 30 minutes at the most to get home. And I'm like, I, I want, I don't know. You you know what, you know, uh, sweet tarts, those little candies that come like in a okay, roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it's about like, like pause. It's about like that. But they, the, they, the candies, right? They <laughs> what look- you, wait, what are you pausing? What are you pausing for? What are you talking about? You just. <laughs> <laughs> You like my son, like y'all well, always want to pause it, something. I, yeah, I was doing the sign language. The, the, the I was pausing the sign language that I was doing. That's what it. That's what was the pause. So we got to pause I this. Was try, like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, hey, 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 so I'm like, man, I like those. I've, I've liked those since I was a kid, right? So I was on the way home. I'm like, man, I, I want, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get some real quick. And I was supposed, I was gonna get some gas, but I had got some earlier. So I'm like, I don't need to get gas. I passed up the gas station that I know had it, and I was like, man, there's no more liquor stores, gas station. I gotta get on the freeway. I said I'm gonna get off early. So I'm gonna get off on a different stop, and I know where there's a, there's a gas station right there. Bro, hit the gas. They didn't have it. So I'm like, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna go to this other one. Went to that one. They didn't have it. There's a 7-Eleven next door. I said, they're going to get it. This is where it's at. They still didn't have it. So I'm like, on the way home, I stopped at the last one. They still didn't have it. But I'm but I'm laughing. I'm laughing in the store because the dude, he finally like, hey, hey, can I help you? Look, Are you looking for something? I said, yeah, I'm looking for the sweet tarts. He said, he said, what? What? He goes, oh, they, these ones. Because you know they got like the little like gummy flavor, the gummy. I don't yeah. want them. So I'm like, man, I want this. I need this one. This is the one I need. I need <laughs> I need no sense like this. You ain't want the gummy. You want the hard ones. <laughs> Yo. That's crazy. Man. Yo, sometimes you got to pause just in case. But you was right. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what you're saying is about to be crazy. And that's what I'm saying. That's what, and I'm in the store. I was in the store. I was like, nah, because he's like, no, we got these ones. And I'm like, bro, they, it, I need this one. This is the one I need. I need the ones. They like this big. It's about like that. And I'm showing him, I'm showing him the little like certs or something like that. I'm like, not this. See this, this one. I like. And he's like, oh, we don't have. I said, man, this is this is a correct. This this is why I needed to just go home. I was on a mission to find them. I could, and I still didn't get none. I don't know where they was at. Um, Cobra said, check your cash. I don't know why I wanted to tell you that. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he probably said, oh, he probably said you twenty, probably said you twenty thousand pesos. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say, bro, like this ain't, in, this ain't in ounces or nothing like that, is it? <laughs> <laughs> 88 Sports Talks, what's going on? But yeah, you, I mean, I guess you're right. If you know that the pause is coming up, you got to pre-pause it. All right? You got to pre-pause it so you can get to the story. I, I agree with that. 
Hey, I've been, you know, I, I listen to uh, Cam and Mace like every morning. That's become mm-hmm. my new favorite because because I I I like the sports, you know what I mean? And and man, they they pause everything. They like yeah. they pause crazy over there. Cause you gotta understand, pause came from Harlem, and that's where they from. So it's like you know, right, right, like, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah it's ridiculous, man. I, I'm, I can't keep up with the pausing. And plus, I want to no, also, but, um, I want to put out the fact, I want to put out the statement too that you're a 40 year old man driving to stores looking for sweet tarts. <laughs> that is crazy. Yo. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? This whole story was, this whole story needed to be paused. The whole, we needed to put the whole story on pause because, but at some point, that's why I said, you ever do some ridiculousness? And I was like, and I'm and I'm I'm exactly what you just said right there is what I'm telling myself. And I'm like, and, and in my mind, I'm saying to myself, you know what? It, you was probably meant you probably meant to choke on one today. That's probably what the pause that too. By the way, that was crazy. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, and I'm like, you really determined to find this. And, then, and at one point, it became like a mission. It became like, nah, it's a, I need to find. Like, this is crazy that I cannot find it. I could. Usually I walk in the store and not even be thinking about it like, oh, let me, oh, let me grab some of that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But when you're looking for it, so yeah, 40 years old man running around looking for sweet tarts, arguing with the little Indian dude talking about, <laughs> no, I needed this. <laughs> I said, man, let me go home. Oh, man. Let me go home where it's safe. <laughs> All right, man. Um, we're about to close off with this. Yeah. <laughs> so I yeah, say pause for the rest of the show. That was crazy. That was whole thing was crazy. All right. The, uh, the Freedom Doctrine, book one, My Path to Canaan. Who needs his book? Who need it? Your mic ain't working again. What happened? You just stopped? Who need the no, book? No, I'm here. Yeah, we here. I mean, like, who need it? Like, who this book is targeted to? Like, oh, who oh, you like... asking me? I thought you. <laughs> yeah, I'm asking you. <laughs> I'm at, I thought you was asking the audience, like, who need it? You know. Oh no, like, oh, all right, you if you what? need it. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 for real. Um, who need the book? I think any, like, anybody that's trying to understand. For one, I think you can benefit it. It doesn't matter. Like, I'm not. Even though we talked about like men and all that stuff, you could, you could be a woman. You could benefit from it. I think if you need to understand what's going on in the world today, you need this book. If you need to understand your purpose, you need this book. I think if you need to, if you find yourself um, trying to figure out what you need to be doing, why things ain't going right, why you keep stuck, you're stuck in this in this depression, uh, mental health illness, all this type of thing that you have going on, then you need this book. I think you know if we're gonna if we're gonna make a positive change and a positive impact. And you need to pick up this book. I'm not saying it's going to solve all your problems, but I think it's it'll it'll give you kind of a framework on where you can start. And my story is my story. You know what I mean? And and that's and I'm just putting myself out there. It's never been something I've been totally comfortable with doing, but it's my story. And I think that people can benefit from it and you can learn. You get there's a lot of lessons in there. I've been through a lot of different experiences, had some things that probably most people have an experience in their life. And all I'm trying to do is just just give you some insight and give you some games so that you can try to avo- either avoid these problems or learn from it and make your life better. It's really that simple. I love it, man. I love it. I think Kofa said you want a book. He said, I. Well, I got you, Kofa. I'm going um, to screenshot every page that I got and just send it to you. Just read it like that. <laughs> <laughs> the bootleggers. <laughs> you know, you better you... And yeah, still brought back Napster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna screenshot it and just put it on my community page for everybody to read the <laughs> Chase book. Hey I, hey, I said the other day, my wife she had texted me a, a part of the book. She had screenshot it and texted it to me and showed me like, oh, this is what I was reading. I said, I said, man, she already bootlegging my stuff already, <laughs> like. <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. I appreciate. I appreciate. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I man. do. I nah, appreciate nah. all the support. Man, I but I say, it, but to, to you know, out there, man, buy the book, bro. Like you know, it's only seven ninety nine. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna come out with the paperback edition, but don't wait for that because who knows? I might not. Who I, you know? <laughs> buy the book now. 
You know what I mean? And then when yeah. the other one come out, buy that one too, so you can have a hard copy of it. Pause. But uh, uh, <laughs> yo, that was bad, bro. I was waiting for you to pause it because I'm like, no, this dude is flagrant. I can't. It was you, you saw it. it. <laughs> hey, you saw it coming. Huh? Pause. Another one. All right, yo, we are gonna wrap up tonight, man, because the shades are getting real yeah. flagrant, and I'm getting real uncomfortable with this conversation. <laughs> so, <laughs> let everybody know where they can find you and find a book, man. Uh, you can well if you you're watching here on YouTube, you can go to No Spoon Podcast. You can subscribe to my channel. Uh, find me on Instagram, Che underscore Uncensored. Uh, Twitter, No Spoon Podcast. Hey, and also I'm trying to push out. I got a Substack, so I write an article almost every week, sometimes twice a week. Uh, my latest one was called A Nation Divided. Um, it's just basically talking about how we both, how there's two perspectives going on in this country right now. And I don't see no way of reconciling those two. But uh, Substack is called Che Writes. That's W-R-I-T-E-S. Um, and then buy the book. It's the Freedom Doctrine book won my path to Canaan. It's available on Amazon right now for $7.99 on ebook form. But, uh, you know, Check me out, man. I'll be on a lot of different other uh, platforms coming up. And uh, hopefully, LaRon will have me back if we not. Uh, I don't even do live if you don't get th- Like, I, I did this for you, bro. Oh, man. That's kind I'm of crazy. I'm, I, I yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I seriously, all, all, all jokes aside, go buy the book. Uh, I wish you gave me the link, man. I, try to, if I think I do got the link. Let me see if I can put this in the chat real quick. Um, you go through my text messages. The li- I didn't, I don't think, I, but you can get the link off my um off my Instagram. Um, ba- basically, all my in my link tree, everything is right there. Like, this is a real ill preparation on your part. Yeah, it is. It's like the bad, most important. It's like the most important thing. <laughs> <laughs> we been sat here for two hours talking about my book, and nobody knows where to get it. Uh, nah, but if you, you go to any you. of my social media platforms, you can find the link, my link tree, and it'll lead you to my book. So not to mention, don't worry, too, I will, I, I will be selling bootleg copies of the book too for three ninety nine. And he undercut me. That's crazy. <laughs> All right, there we go. I'll put the link in the description right there. I should have did that before, but yeah, there we go. Oh yes, yeah, see, um, Shay, you and your wife. Got to go check this movie out. American Fiction. It's in the theaters? Yeah. That's cool because I got like $75 in gift cards to, to the theaters for, I have for Christmas. I might check American Fiction. Yeah. We just watched it today. It's, it's the truth. All right. Yeah. All right. We're going to close out on that, man. I appreciate you, Shay, coming on, man. I appreciate everybody coming there. I appreciate the super chats. Shout out to Osiris and MiddleMega.com. For the $10 for being today's sponsor. And everybody else, too, I appreciate y'all as well. For both live streams, oh, I, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I might put both of these in members only. Matter of fact, I ain't going to do that because I'm advertising Shay. So I got to leave it open. But appreciate y'all. All right, man. Till next time. Peace. Real rap. Ron is signing off. And I'm not freestyling tonight. You know, I didn't get enough super chats to freestyle. And Shay don't want to hit the bars. Nah. Nah, I'm cool. Yeah. I heard real rap Ron it ain't. <laughs> We had conspiracy theory, Ron. Though we did yeah, get yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. CTR. You did have CTR. There That's you go. The, CTR. Yeah. All right, man. I appreciate you. Appreciate sharing. it, bro. All right, later. Yeah. Peace. All right.